Okay, everyone. So with this uh, current update to the flood outlook for spring 2020, we do have some good news in here. And of course, that is that our flood risk has moved down uh, slightly since our earlier outlooks. We have not had any big significant uh, snowfall events uh, since mid-January. So our snowfall in SWE since January 18th is actually running a bit below normal, roughly between a half an inch and three quarters of an inch of water content, less than we would normally have received uh, during that time period. Mild conditions uh, through this midwinter period uh, pretty much have kept our frost depths near or again, very, what they were prior to this period and shallower overall. The bad news, of course, is we still have a significant risk for flooding, um, much in the moderate to major category, and that is largely, again, because of the excessive fall and early winter precipitation. So we are still actually running at uh, a record to near record levels for that fall through midwinter precipitation. The soils underneath the snowpack are still really, really wet, though frozen. Still above normal snowpack and snow water content across most of the basin uh, with a very high runoff potential. Uh, also some quasi good news in this is that our Calatus climate outlooks do not show a clear signal either way for wet, dry, or normal. Uh, prior to this, we were looking at a cooler and wetter pattern, but that's now been suspended in the climate outlooks. So this spring, the risk levels are still sitting at the top 10, possibly into top five flood territory. So here's the graphic with all the dots and colors showing still moderate to major throughout the Red River Basin. Uh, there are some bright spots, if you will, and I've highlighted those below, but there are uh, some sites on both the Minnesota tributaries and North Dakota tributaries that are, are down slightly uh, so they've actually flipped a color. Most of these levels have gone down just from anywhere from two-tenths of a foot to maybe half a foot or so, but in the cases of Twin Valley and Shelley uh, in Norman County, High Landing and Crookston in Polk County, uh, those are down or they flipped from the uh, one category down into the lesser category. On the North Dakota side, uh, Lisbon down there in is and Nechi at the far end, north end, so at the southeast corner of North Dakota and up in the northeast corner, those are also dropped down a first category from the uh, earlier February outlook. Back in the background, we know we had a wetter than normal fall and it was historically wet for much of the region. And again, for the Northern Plains, January through December was a historically wet period all throughout this Northern Plains area and into the Western Great Lakes. Our soil moisture, as I mentioned earlier, underneath the snowpack is still running at the upper tercel, the 95th and 99th percentile of, of wetness, uh, pretty much as wet as we've ever seen in this basin. The accumulated precipitation, and this is looking from September 1st through just a day or two ago, and you're looking at a large area of four to eight inches, pushing even nine inches above normal precipitation uh, up through the Red River Basin. Now, if you look specifically at Fargo, you'll notice that it has now dropped to the fifth wettest season on record. Uh, again, just the uh, scant amounts of precipitation that have occurred since January 20th. Uh, in this case, uh, 61 hundredths below average since January 20th here in Fargo. And you'll see now that 2009, 2010, uh, both have jumped ahead as far as being somewhat wetter overall. Grand Forks is still soundly in first place. And again, much of the central and northern part of the basin um, going north of Fargo is, is pushing that way. Thus, the overall basin is showing uh, still in record territory for precipitation. And that's, again, from September 1st through the 25th of February. Now, in the background, we know this uh, that we had a wet fall. This hydrograph here is showing two years. The year 2018 on the left side of that showing river flow in the Grand Forks area, much pretty much normal throughout most of that calendar year. And then in 2019, showing it uh, spiking up into the much above normal precipitate or runoff category, excuse me, last spring. And then again last fall so that it was actually hitting historic territory. 
And that's pretty much the case for every river point along the Red River north of Fargo. Highest on record last fall, and again going into freeze up with flows highest ever recorded for this time period. In Fargo itself, pretty much right at that uh, record level. Again, those bumps that you're seeing in the September, October, November time frame, those are the falls of 2008, 2009, 2010. So backing up to Grand Forks, we see that we were again higher flow than any of those years uh, last fall and throughout now into the winter season. And in Fargo, we're just right at those peaks and just just below record level flow. And in general, near freeze up conditions, at freeze up conditions, we were just at the 95th, 90th percentile or higher uh, record flow in a lot of locations going into freeze up. So what's next? In the spring flooding scenario, we have those first two of our seven key ingredients are well met, both at or near record. Um, that again, as I mentioned, the previous historic wet seasons were the fall of 2008, 2009, and 2010, which preceded those floods of 19 and 11. Uh, right now, our frost depths are running below normal, so that is a good point, and much less deep than last year at this time. Our winter snowpack is still running above normal, except in the far northern basin. And our snow water equivalent, the water content in that snow, is still quite high. We've had our typical winter seasons, precipitation, snow amount, and water content very early this year, and we've been holding at that level now for the last five to six weeks. Frost steps. This is the update here as of the 24th of February. And again, we're just getting a little deeper frost uh, through the central and northern part of the basin. In the far southern part of the basin, there are still some very shallow frost areas uh, sitting around uh, from Fargo south into Wapaton, Morton areas. Uh, there are some areas that are just a few inches deep. But in general, it's highly variable depending on what the snow cover is over that area. And here's the snow depth analysis here as of this early this morning. Again, that has not changed substantially. It's dropped a little bit, but that's basically as the snow is compressing as opposed to disappearing. And so we're getting a, a denser and denser snowpack uh, through time. But we have not added much significant snow, just an inch or two here across, across the basin here in the last few weeks. And the snow water equivalent is nearly steady meaning that we've lost a little bit due to evaporation, but we've gained a little bit just through the scant amounts of snow, so we're holding pretty steady uh, across the basin, not much change. And this is just to look at uh, recent years. This is 2011. As of this date in 2011, we were continuing to amass huge amounts of precipitation in the southern part of the basin, running two to four inches above what we currently have for snow water content. So again, just increasing that runoff potential for the spring in 2011. In 2009, uh, we had been running above that for much of this winter season, but around this time is when we had started getting heavier snowfalls late February and into March. So 2009 is starting to gain uh, overall higher amounts of SWE in the southern basin at this point in the calendar year. So again, 2009, 2011, eventually go on to produce much higher flows in the southern basin. In the northern basin, as you can tell, most of the northern basin, both in 2011 and 2009, was not substantially different for runoff potential than we have now. And here is the snow water content ranking by the sub-basins. Uh, this is off the North Central River Forecast uh, Center's webpage. And you can see right through that central part of the Red River Basin is where we're very highest, uh, pushing the 80th and 90th percentiles across that area. And then lowest along the Canadian border, where we're running from the 50th and 60th percentiles uh, down into the 40th in some locations. And this is very similar to what we had at this date in 2019. Now, what's the difference? Well, we have a lot more water content in the soil underneath all this snowpack. So looking at these conditions as we're stacking up, really what's left to play out is, is how much more snow we're going to get, of course, and then what's going to happen in the spring thaw cycle. Do we have the potential for a late spring or a heavy spring rain on top of this? 
Um, looking at week one, that's from now until next Wednesday, not a lot of precipitation in the forecast. So again, this is good news. We are expecting some trace amounts today and overall in the coming week, less than a tenth of an inch broadly across the area. Looking into week two, um, that's the 8 to 14 day forecast. You can see that across the northern part of the basin for temperatures near normal with slightly above normal temperatures in the southern part of the Red River Basin in week two. Precipitation wise in the north may be slightly above normal in the south may be slightly below normal. So overall in that week two uh, pattern near normal temps and precipitation on average. As we get into March, what are we going to see? Well, we're looking at March going into it relatively quiet. So is this going to be the lamb to lion type of March? Well, stay tuned. The actual outlook is showing what is called equal chances, meaning it has no clear indication of either above normal, below normal, or near normal conditions. So it's literally not, not well established. No clear solution to that. And likewise, into the rest of the spring, March, April, May, again, no clear climate signal. We're sitting at equal chances. You notice right in that Red River Basin, eastern third of North Dakota, northwest quarter of Minnesota, uh, showing into that equal chances realm. Our flood risk by categories. Again, as we talked about, this has been adjusted with numbers slightly lower than the last uh, run but we're still looking at significant runoff, much higher, excuse me, higher than normal and certainly higher, possibly higher than the spring 2019 flood levels. Here's looking at some specific locations. I started down in Wapaton Breckenridge. You're looking there, it's basically a moderate flood threat. I should have colored that red, sorry about that. Um, and But at that point, you're still looking at uh, the possibility of some flood wall installations uh, at least they'll be considering it. And then also there will be at least one or two bridges closed in and around the area there. And of course, outside of town, you're going to see still significant flows in the rural areas with this. This is our probabilistic flood outlook summary for that specific location at Wapaton Breckenridge. And you can see that the cluster of outlooks in the middle there, the 50% point is sitting right between moderate and major, and it's actually just a bit lower than the 2019, uh, what can, happened in 2019. The Wild Rice uh, River coming in near Abercrombie uh, across Richland County there, very mid to high major, there's a fair amount of snowpack coming across there. And at that point you would see some bridge closures uh, near that gauge. This is down again just slightly from the last outlook. And here's the cluster of those outlook values. And now you can see that that 50% point is very near what occurred in 2019. So again, the cluster is showing up uh, right in that mid-range spread, but in a mid-range moderate, or excuse me, major range. For the Fargo-Moorhead area, still in the mid to high major flood stage range with flood walls uh, possibly installed and some bridge closures occurring in town. This is again just a slight reduction from last uh, couple of weeks and we can see that that 50 percent line is just about right on again what happened in 2019. So it's down a little bit about a foot from uh, last two weeks ago, the two week ago uh, outlook. Looking on the Cheyenne River uh, coming down through Valley City, again, still at major flood stage, uh, still some concern uh, throughout that middle and lower part of the Cheyenne River drainage because of, again, a lot of, of water from last fall and a fair amount of snowpack in there. Uh, so that's bringing the Cheyenne River at Valley City into major flood stage. And looking at this cluster, you can see that the 50% point, even the 75% point, even the 90% point is sitting very close to what happened in 2019. So pushing into the uh, fair chance of getting in above the major flood stage and, and a little bit of concern in that area. Typically at that point, you might see some flood wall closures as well and the possibility of some emergency levy action going in. Now through the Cheyenne River and the uh, Maple River and the Rush River coming in through Cass County, a lot of runoff potential in all of those river systems. Into Harwood you're going to see that 
coming in uh, right at the major flood stage, uh, very similar to the type of things we've seen uh, here last year as well. It pretty much gets up uh, well above 91 feet and flat lines in between 91 and 90, 92 feet. Uh, you can see the cluster at that point, slightly above uh, the 2019 level, uh, still below the record level in 1997, but uh, conspicuously close at that point. So at that point in Harwood, you're going to see water up against the rail bridge, up against I-29, uh, and depending on how long it lasts, how much backwater spreads in and around that area. Pretty much coming in both on the Minnesota and North Dakota side, north of Fargo, so coming in uh, from the Buffalo River, coming in uh, here into Harwood, so north of Fargo-Moorhead area, a lot of breakout flow expected, and moving up the main stem of the Red River. And coming up through Halstead, Hendrum area and moving up the river, you'll see that uh, typical flows here coming into Grand Forks and East Grand Forks. Again, looking at major flood stages with flood wall closures expected and rail bridge possibly affected, possibly closed at that level. The 50% point there still showing to be above the 2019 level now because, again, more flow coming in in general across the east central part of North Dakota and coming out of the uh, Red Lake River drainage. So again, more potential flow coming into Grand Forks and expecting to see a higher flood level than in 2019. Moving up the river toward Oslo, same type of thing going on as we would see in Harwood where it comes up and pretty much flatlines uh, at a very high stage and spreads out considerably across that area near Oslo. And with that, the probabilities are pretty much spread right in there, uh, right up against the 2019 level and uh, just below the record stages from 2009. The Park River at Grafton, again, just to point out, that there is a new bypass operational. So these are forecasts for that river condition, but outside of the area protected by the bypass. So again, not a huge amount of flow coming off the Park River and the various branches thereof, but something to pay attention to, especially as we have that new bypass in play to see how that starts to operate. And here's the cluster again, still very low, so showing that uh, low end of the minor and possibly into the low end of moderate flood stage. And still possibly coming in even lower than the 2019 flood level. Moving up the river uh, from Oslo into Drayton and into Pemina, again, similar type of conditions uh, from the 2019 period. Pemina and Drayton coming in a little bit higher now. Um, than we expect, than we saw in 2019. Uh, here we see the levels are just slightly, a couple of tenths down from uh, the run two weeks ago. And still looking at that cluster coming in above the 2019 level, as I said, you can see that the 50% point is very close to the level that was uh, hit in 2009. Looking over to Devil's Lake, that also has been uh, reduced overall, just a couple of tenths of a foot, uh, still looking at roughly a two to three foot rise, um, but we've knocked everything down there, just a two or three tenths of a foot overall on that graphic. So back into the review, good news. Those flood risk categories are down slightly, pretty much all over the place. Uh, again, the snow, fall and snow water content since January 18th is running below normal. So that's helped us out along with our mild conditions, which are still keeping us with a relative shallow frost depth. Bad news, of course, is that we still have that risk for significant flooding, largely charged by the very wet ground conditions underneath the snow and the fact that we are actually still dealing with above normal snowpack and snow water content. Our latest climate outlooks do not show a clear signal either toward dry, wet, or even normal. So that's stay tuned. That's a, an outlier out there. And of course, we know March can be highly variable. So this spring, the risk levels are still looking at top 10, possibly into top five flood territory. We would expect to see across the basin 
widespread runoff, road closures, flood walls closed, possibly worse than the spring flood of 2019, possibly into top 10 flood category. At this point, we have a lot less winter to go through and lots of early spring yet to play out. So stay tuned. We still have one more of these outlooks coming out uh, two weeks from today, uh, Thursday, March 12th. And here's the contact information where you can get a hold of us. So at this point, we can open it up for questions. And if you do have questions, we would ask that you raise your hand. We should be able to see those questions and should be able to I see. OK, there's a question from Brent. I see some other. Uh, Brent Nelson, uh, if you want to go ahead and ask a question, please do so. Okay, we'll read off the list. Not hearing the presentation, now it came in. Okay, we're good. Rich, I see your question on the list here. Has there been any discussion about the unharvested cornfields having an impact either positive or negative? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, there is a huge percentage of the landscape. We're talking some 10 or 15% of the landscape in places where corn is sitting there still with uh, snow in there. We know in that deeper snow pack uh, that the frost levels are, are much shallower. Uh, the question on whether or not the snow will melt faster because it's got that corn in it or slower is still debatable. Um, the River Forecast Center does, does have some experience with this in other parts of the country, so they're attempting to, to work with that. But right now it's pretty much being operated as if it would run off at the same rate as the uh, open ground. And uh, yeah, further questions on that, Rich, go ahead. With the next question we have in is on the Red Lake River at Crookston looking like. Um, overall, the uh, flow coming out of High Landing and into Crookston has been reduced just slightly. So that's why I said it bumped down a category. Um, let's see, can I actually bring up that? 